Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a mirror finish by polishing your silver jewelry. This is something that a lot of jewelers struggle with or perhaps didn't learn in the beginning. I'll start off by saying there are lots of different ways to achieve what you want with your polishing and I think that's sometimes the hardest part is there are so many different options. So I'm gonna introduce you to some of the products that I use and then I'm gonna show you how I get a mirror finish. I am gonna be using hand polishing. So there are ways you can do this by machines as well but we're gonna be focusing on hand polishing for this task and I'm gonna show you how to do it on a flat surface and also on a textured surface. So first of all, I'll show you the tools that we use. So we use our file. So this is a D-shaped file and it's cut two. This is the one that I use the most. You can also use a flat file, but I find D-shape is quite useful because it's got the flat side and the curved. So if you only have one file, that's the one I'd go for, but a selection of files can be helpful. So that's my larger hand file. I'll also have some needle files. And this is useful for the first stage of polishing when we wanna get scratches out of our silver or we want to get any kind of sharp edges and curve them. So that's kind of before we get onto the polishing, more the sanding stage. This is called a brass bristle brush and I use this a lot for, again, for the initial stages of polishing. So once I've done my filing, I'll often give it a brass brush, which just gives it a little bit of a, a clean up. And this works on both metal clay and also sterling silver and of course gold and whatever kind of metals that you want to file and polish. Then I have my emery sticks, which are over this side. So emery sticks are really useful. It's essentially sandpaper. Sometimes it's called emery paper or wet and dry paper. I can use any of them and I can use them by hand, just a little kind of section like this on its own. Um, but I do like wrapping them around these sticks because it just gives a really nice flat surface to work from. And they're different from files because they tend to be finer and they come in all different grades. So you normally start with something quite coarse, like a 400 or maybe a 240. The lower the number, the more coarse the grade is going to be. So if you had a 100, that would be really coarse sandpaper. And then you go through 400, 600, 800, 1,000 is really fine, 1,200 is really fine. So it's nice to have a selection of those in your cupboard so that you can use the ones that are appropriate for the job you're, you're doing. Then I'm a big fan of polishing papers, which I always talk about. Uh, I came across these when I was learning my metal clay work, but I also use them for sterling silver jewelry work and any kind of anything related to that as well. They're like finer than the sandpaper in most cases. So I start with the green and I work my way down. There's kind of a gray, a blue, a pink, a mint kind of color, and then a cream. So you work your way through those and that really helps to get a nice mirror finish. So that's how I do it. Um, and I always finish up with glanol which is my polishing, metal polish and a polishing cloth. Or if you don't have a polishing cloth, you can also use just regular tissue paper. So they're the basic tools that I use. I'm also gonna show you, we are gonna be doing hand polishing in this video, but if you did want to invest more in tools and machinery for your polishing, a rotary tumbler is a really nice piece of kit to have. It's basically got a barrel inside, which has silver shot inside. I'm just going to open up and show you. And it's got some liquid and also some, well, I often use fairy liquid, but you can also get some barreling compound. And you put your silver or your gold or your brass or whatever pieces in here, and it will give it a really nice shine. It's not perfect. In my opinion, it's not as good as hand polishing. So they're my still shot bits in there. Um, so you just buy the shot, make sure they're always covered with water and just follow the instructions for using the barrel polish. Uh, yeah, so in my opinion, uh, hand polishing a piece is always gives the best effect, almost always. So if you're doing something really special, a special commission, I'd normally do that. But sometimes a barrel polish can be useful for just generally shining up pieces or if you've got very textured pieces because it gets in all the different nooks and crannies. Um, it's also good if you're just doing a whole bunch of pieces and you don't have time to hand polish everything, like if you're running a business and you need to speed up the process. And that just goes on there and when you turn it on, it just turns 
the piece around. It's not plugged in at the moment. And I would leave it in there often for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how, how shiny I want my piece to be. Uh, the other tool which is really worth investing in as you develop in your jewelry making career is called a pendant motor. So this is the end of a pendant motor and it's a rotary tool so it spins round when you turn it on and there's a foot pedal that goes with it. These are a little bit more expensive, they're often a few hundred pounds to get a good one and you can change the tools that come on the end. So this one's a quick release so just by flicking it up I can take my tool on and off and I'll have a whole range of tools for filing my piece, for sanding, for polishing. Uh, so that's something to think about a little bit further down the line or if you want to invest in tools. But for today, I'm not gonna focus on that. It's all gonna be about hand polishing. Great, so I'm gonna come over to my piece. The piece I've chosen has a texture on one side and has a flat back on the other. So I'm gonna show you how to shine up both pieces, both sides of the piece. And you can see it's quite dull. It is silver, but it's not had any polishing. And on the back, I deliberately chose a piece that's kind of a little bit uneven and has some kind of little marks on it because that happens with jewelry sometimes, especially if you're restoring an old piece. So the first stage, I'm gonna start with the back, is to make a really nice even playing field, if you like. So I start with my file. I'm gonna file across the whole piece until it's really nice and even. So I just place it on my bench peg. And as I start to file, I'll see which bits are higher and which bits are lower, by which bits shine up. And I wanna get it to where it's all nice and even. If I start polishing my piece before I do this, it's not gonna give me a mirror finish. I need to start right back at this stage. So I keep moving my piece around to get a nice even finish. I don't want to push down too much on either side, try and keep it nice and flat. Hopefully you can see there the dip where it's, I haven't quite reached it yet, so my aim is to get all of those out. If you find it's taking you a really long time to, to do this, you might need to use a thicker cut file. So that's when it's useful to have different files as well. But a thicker cut file will give thicker scratches, so it's just weighing up what you want. Great, so now I've got a nice even finish on this piece. There are some file mark scratches, which I was expecting, so those I'll clean up. First of all, I'm just gonna go around the edge and just gently take off any sharp bits that I've created around the edge. And I keep feeling it with my finger just to make sure that I'm really happy with the finish too. So that is stage one done. I've done my filing. And depending on the shape of your piece, you, you might use different shaped files. So next up, I'm gonna use some sandpaper. So I can either use a bit of sandpaper or I can use an emery stick. Uh, this is 800. And I'm just gonna rub over it to get some of those file marks out. I can also lay my piece of sandpaper down on the bench and go around. And it's often a good idea to do a kind of figure of eight shape that gives a nice even pressure to the back of the piece. And I just check it every now and then to see how we're getting on. So I can see there's still some scratches, but it's getting better. If you don't have a bench peg, of course you can do this on a table. Any flat surface will do. If you're gonna do backwards and forwards motions, that's fine, but just move the piece around regularly so you don't accidentally do one side too much. And I kind of alternate between that and figure of eight. Great, that's getting better. Okay, fab. So I can see I've still got scratches, but the scratches are a lot finer now. So the first stage I had scratches from my file marks. Now I've got scratches from the sandpaper. And what we're doing is just each stage trying to get less and less scratches until we get down to the mirror finish. So now I'm gonna move on to my polishing papers. I'm gonna start with the green. Rub really hard and really fast and your piece starts to get quite warm as well. You know that your 
working hard on it. And you can start to see that's getting a little more shiny. It's quite a rewarding process, hand polishing, because start with something so matte and dull and end up with something that's so shiny. This stage, I'm not too worried about doing all the figure of eights and things because it's much finer. So it's not as important for it to, it's not gonna take away a lot of my metal at this stage. And I spend a bit of time on each stage. I and mean, if I put my finger in there, I can start to see my mirror finish coming on already. So that's great. Just keep at it. Yeah, this is one of my favorite parts is when we get to the pink because it always starts to look really shiny by then. Great, and then even at this stage, if you can compare the other side, which I haven't polished yet, a real matte, matty gray finish with this side, you can really see what it's starting to do. Two more to go. Okay, great, and yeah, we've got a real nice mirror finish in there. So that's the back side, and I will finish that with Glanol and my silver polishing cloth but I also want to make sure I can do the front side and the reason why I chose this piece is because I wanted to show you guys how to do it with a texture as well. So with a texture it's the same process except for I'm not going to use my file so I obviously don't want to use my file to flatten it out so I'm going to leave that stage off. I also don't really want to use my sandpaper because there's nothing that really needs sanding on here. If you have a harsh texture, you might want to use a little bit of sandpaper on there, but be careful because you don't want to sand the texture off. And then I'm going to go through, back through my polishing papers again. These last for a little while, these polishing papers. You get a big sheet, so I've just cut a section off. So I'm going to do exactly the same with the front. So I'm just going to rub for about 30 seconds to a minute on each one, and that will bring up this piece as well. Um, if you want to get a shine inside all the little crevices, then this isn't going to do that. This is going to shine up the top layer, which gives a really beautiful effect. But if you do want the shine inside as well, that's when you will need to use your barrel polish. So the polishing machi machine we spoke about earlier, because hand polishing inside those bits is going to be very tricky. The other option is you could use an ag agate burnisher. But again, I wouldn't really recommend trying to polish all the tiny bits in between. You'll get a really nice finish by doing it the way that we're doing it, doing it now. So I'll go through and do them quickly and see you on the other side. Great, so when, now that I've come to the end of those, you can see that I've got a really nice shine on the front of my piece. I'm just gonna do one last little bit there. So just by going through the exact same process and you can see that it's really shined up the top layer of the texture and I think it's actually works better with texture to have the lower layer of the texture not shiny because it really brings out that 3D-ness of it. Now the back looks slightly less exciting now so sometimes I need to go back just one or two because it's had all the grease from my fingers from rubbing it uh, and then need to kind of go back and just do that and just be careful not to put too much on the front. This is always the, the slight dilemma. So I'm just going to do a little bit on each. A little bit on the back. Great, so then I've got a really nice finish but I'm going to finish it off with my glanol. Before I do, I'll just show you what it looks like first. There's a nice shine on the front. And pretty good shine on the back, bar the greasy bits from my fingers. <laughs> do that last one more time. There we go, it's a bit better. And again, checking that mirror finish with your finger. You can see it nicely. Great, so I'm gonna pop a little bit of glanol onto my polishing cloth. If you don't have a polishing cloth, you can use some tissue paper. I don't need much at all, just a little bit. Spread it out and I just rub my piece onto there. 
and then going to find a clean bit to rub off. And hopefully you can see that really nice finish on the back. And again, really a mirror po polish. If there are any scratches that you're worried about, you can always go back a few layers and work on those. I'm going to do the front as well. And work on both at the same time. And that is how I do my mirror finish. I hopefully you can see a really nice, beautiful, professional shine on the front and on the back there. So that's how I get a mirror finish. There are other ways, using sandpaper or using different abrasives. If you use other ways, then feel free to share about them in the comments and have a go at my way as well. I find it works really well. Good luck with getting your mirror finish and I look forward to seeing you on another video soon.